All right then, so, welcome to another video. I am Zodi of Zodi's Rails. How are we all doing today? Now, we've got Model Railway unboxing. Uh, you're probably going to know what it is from the uh, from the title, so there you go. Don't have to do that. Uh, it is from Sheffield's Rails. Um, I'll leave how much it was just about there. How much it was at the time of buying this. did take a little while to get there here. Um, mostly because I think it got lost in the mail, really. Um, they sent it out, but then it's taken... Well, it is exactly one week to get here, but I think it was that was on more of the Fulton Royal Mail than Rails, so there's nothing against Rails of Sheffield right there. But anywho, let's get this thing open. Now this is a new camera, so it's not got autofocus on the lens that I'm using. When I say new, it's not 100% new. It's the um, it's the Nikon Nikon uh, D3200. Uh, we're using a, I think it's a 70 millimeter lens, 72. I can't remember what millimeter it is, but um, I'll leave that in the description as well if you want to know. So the focus may look a little bit odd as you can see here, but when it's down here, it's absolutely fine. And um, there might be some odd background noise as well. I'm not sure how to get rid of that yet. If you do know, please, please help me. That little hissing noise that you might be able to hear. Anyway, let's just keep unboxing. That's my favourite right there, the bubble wrap. Gotta love some of that. There you go, we got a little parcel. Let's put that back there. Right, now I'm just going to open this off screen, the bubble wrap, because I need to get the uh, packing slip out of there. Obviously I don't want anyone to see what my address is. Okay then, so let's get this open. Quite well packaged. And here we are, it is the Hornby Rustin 48. 48 horsepower, that's why it's called the 48. There we go, there's lovely box graphics. Now, I've actually wanted one of these for a while, just because of how small they are. Um, I haven't actually looked at any reviews on these. I know they're not exactly new, but uh, I wanted one. Um, might as well unbox it on camera for you guys. So, so there's your box by Hornby, of course. Diesel locomotive. Now, the Rustin 48, the 48 stands for 48 horsepower, as far as I know. The livery that we have it in is let's bring it up or is it too close to focus too close to focus there you go it is the john d wear dare and sons and of course it's dcc ready as well now sorry about the fiddling with the camera lens this is all new to me with this camera on the back, you've actually got the history. Uh, if you want to look up history, um, if you can pause it and read it, then go ahead. Uh, but I think uh, my lens isn't too good for that, but there you go. <laughs> Hornby 48 Rustin. And then you've got the top view of it as well on top of the box. Anyway, enough looking at the box, let's slide it out. And look at that. Absolutely tiny. Wow. I've never had to, I've never actually had a locomotive this small before. It's quite something really. Let's get it out of its little uh, plastic casing. Well, 
it's in there nice and good, I can tell you that. So we've got the body removal, just there. And there is the normal maintenance and operating. So it's all the standard stuff. You've got your exploded diagram there. All quite simple because of how small it is, really. But yeah, so let's have a look at the locomotive. So first off, slide out this second little sleeve. It's really, really light, as you can imagine for something so small. So we've got our extra couplings in there, because you can remove the uh, flatbed on this. And the flatbed's uh, joined with something uh, like a little rod, so the extra couplings are there to replace that. And to go on the front of the loco as well. Okay, got the main locomotive. It is absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. What I'll do is I shall get this onto the little uh, light box I've got. Well, the light box is not exactly the best in the world. And we'll have a closer look at it once we've actually got it out of this package. Because I'm sure yeah I don't really want to be holding that in my hands for too long because of how delicate this actually feels but it is got some lovely detail on there absolutely beautiful So yeah, let's uh, take a little look once we get it onto a little bit of a, a little bit of track. Now I'm hoping this is actually within focus. Uh, let's just move it down a little bit. There we go. So I'm hoping this is within focus again. I'm not too keen. Well, not too uh, sure with these cameras just yet. Uh, I've realised that the lens that I've got with it. Um, it's not the lens that would have come with it originally. So I need to get a different lens to do these. Uh, closer up shots so do excuse that for now um, I don't want to use my phone I want to try and get better with these cameras but anyway so here we are we have it on here now just from looking at it it is just so so small so first off the detail wise uh, I believe the handrails on here uh, this one seems to be uh, molded although this one looks like it could be separately fitted you got your little steps Got some what looks like lifting points, so maybe to lift up with a crane. Now, your buffer beams look like they're higher than they usually would be, but because of how small it is of a locomotive, uh, it doesn't surprise me they are a little bit higher. It's more of an industrial shunting thing, so of course. Now, the wagon itself, the numbers and lettering on here is quite nice. The paint works really nice, even though it's just the normal sort of brown and dark brown. The wooden uh, sort of slats or boards, whatever you want to call them, they are really well individually moulded. Well, not individually moulded, but the mould itself makes them look like they're completely individual altogether. That's been done really well, so the paintwork does help with that as well. Paintwork on the locomotive, I really, really do like that. Turn it around. Now on the front here, just make sure we're in focus. Sorry about this bit just down just down here. Ignore that. So you've got the white front, you got your wasp stripe, which I really really like. I do like the uh, wasp stripe. That does appeal to me for some reason. Uh, it's more or less the same on the other side, so don't have to really look at that. If we zoom in a little bit, no, we won't be able to, it doesn't like that. 
doesn't want to focus too much. I'll try and get some close-up shots if I can. I'll put some pictures in. But, um, yeah, it's pretty simple looking. Uh, of course, there does need to be a couplet that goes on here. The bottom of the, or sorry, the underneath of the wagon does have the uh, break-in gear. Oh, I am destroying my box. There you go, so I don't know if you can see that too well, but it does actually have the brake gear under there as well. You have the NEM coupling at the back here, which is quite free moving as well. So that is good because it means it won't uh, get caught going around the tighter corners, which this will be used on. And on the back of the locomotive, you do have the uh, wash stripe. The windows themselves, I believe they are separately fitted, which is really nice, does make the model uh, sort of stand out a little bit more for the price that you pay. The buffers, of course, they're not sprung, although I'm not sure if they're metal. I mean, the model itself does feel like it's die cast, so it wouldn't be surprising if it is actually die cast uh, framing or uh, chassis. Uh, the wagon itself, that is only plastic, but the special thing about the wagon is that it does have pickups on it. So there's a little wire that goes between the wagon and the loco. So if you're going over larger points, it does have contacts at all point uh, while going around on your layout or just on the track. So that is something really, really nifty. Um, now, I just realised the camera's running out of battery, so that's my own fault for not uh, filling the battery up or charging it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get the rolling road out. We're going to see how it operates on that. Once we've got that uh, running, we'll then put it onto the layout and do a little shunting with it. So, be back soon. Okay, so, here we are. Now, I know the lens on this isn't exactly the best at uh, doing the close-up, so we'll have to get another lens for that, so I'm sorry about um, that. Do bear with me, I do still hope you're enjoying this video, I am doing the best that I can. I'm sorry about the glare, um, I can't really get the glare to disappear easily so unfortunately I'm stuck like that for this uh, part so again I'm very very sorry about this I'm still new to this <laughs> please don't let it let this affect how you think of the um, of the video but uh, let's get ourselves into it so we've got it onto the rolling road I've left the wagon onto it as well I've left the wagon on there just so we can see if the pickup well just so we can get it how it would have how it worked straight out of the box basically so just make sure we got it focused hopefully so let's turn the power on so there we go so the power is on and we're going to get the power, the controller going turning it up and it's off now that is really, really smooth. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Hold on, let's just uh, wiggle this around. Yes, I know it is slightly slanted as well. Again, I'm very sorry for all this. There you go, you can see the wheels turning there. Turn it up a little bit more. He's making little thud, 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 thud noise. But not too much, that's good. Let's turn it the other way. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's too keen going forwards. Again, this hasn't been running yet, and it is on DC, so just bear that in mind, it's on DC, has not been running yet. So let's see how slow it can go from the get-go. So turning it up. Okay, so that's pretty good. Oh, it stopped.
So you can see all the little holes in the wheels moving. So it's not too good at the minute, but it is still pretty slow looking. Check it in reverse, see how that goes. Started to seem right for about a yard shunting crawl. It's not super, super slow, but it's not fast. Oh, there we go, we have stopped a little bit. Yeah, out of the box, it actually seems pretty good. Uh, so what I'll do now is I shall turn the camera off. I will get this running for half an hour one way, half an hour another way. We'll then go and see how it uh, does then. We'll then put it onto layout and do a little bit of shunting with it. So for what will be a second view will probably be, well, it'll be over an hour for me. So here we go. So I know the sound's going to be a little bit different on this one. This just shows you what it's like on the layout now that we have it run in. Nice and smooth. I think that little bit of track there is a little bit dead, so we could just give a little bit of a push. There we go. So it's a nice shunting speed backwards and forwards. And again, this is still on DC. Now the track was cleaned before doing this, so I may need to have a look at that specific section, the connections uh, for the future, see how it does run. So let's see how it goes over the points. So the track was clean, but I did have to go over it again after this clip to uh, make sure it was extra clean because it did stop once or twice, as you can see here. Um, just going to let you listen to this next bit, just see how you think. Something I did notice is if you don't have the wire between the uh, loco and the uh, wagon, actually folded up. If you're not careful it does actually catch on the track a little bit so for some people with um, some specific points it may get caught on the points and actually damage it so of course do be careful of that if you get one of these models. So here we go again just going to show you how it goes over the points once more just to give you an idea once I did clean them just a little bit more. Another thing that I found concerning is that the coupling on the back of the wagon doesn't have any sort of spring system, so it doesn't actually spring back into the center, so coupling can be a little bit difficult, and if it's off, it can cause the wagon behind it to actually derail. So we are now coming to the end of the video. Uh, in a minute, you're going to see a shunting video, which is going to be sped up, but it just gives you an idea for how it looks on the layout. Once I have the backboard on there and the board on the side, uh, it will look a lot better. I'll get the camera angle to look better. At the minute, I know it doesn't look too good at all, but uh, I will be working on that. But as far as the rusting goes, I think it's a really cool little thing. Um, if you've got the money and you've got a layout that it'll work on, so something small like this, uh, shunting layout, it, it really is worth it. It's quite a cool little thing to have because of the size of it really and it's such a smooth runner once it's been running as well so 
yeah, I I would personally buy one of these again in a different livery as well because they're really really cool. But uh, other than that, though, guys, please do like, subscribe, uh, even comment on the video if you want. If you don't want to, not a problem. Uh, every subscribe that I do see on the channel does give me such an, a boost to make more of these videos, and it, I really, really do appreciate it. So thank you to everyone who subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, that's not a problem. Thank you for just watching my video or even just liking the videos. It does really, really help. So thank you again, guys. I hope you do enjoy this little uh, sped up shunting and hopefully I'll see you in another video. Thank you.